Welcome to Water Talk, a water online podcast showcasing today's water industry leaders and innovators. And now, here is today's host. Good morning and welcome back to Water Talk. I am your host, Todd Schnick, joined by a good friend of mine, Maury Gaston. He is the manager of marketing services for American Ductile Iron Pipe and American Spiral Weld Pipe. He's also the vice chair of American Waterworks Association, a 21 committee that develops standards for all ductile iron products. He's also the chairman of the Alabama Iron and Steel Council, which is part of Manufacture Alabama. Maury, my friend, good to have you back. Hello, Todd. Great to be here with you again. I appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, I wish we uh, still wish we were had some time to be together face to face, but I'm enjoying that we've had a couple of chances to get together and talk about some important stuff. What I'd love for you to do today is just to tell us a bit more about uh, American ductile iron pipe and American spiral weld pipe. Well, thank you, Todd. We make four inch diameter through 64 inch diameter ductile iron pipe. We've been doing this for 115 years now and pioneered many of the things uh, that are common in the industry these days, including cement mortar lining. And uh, just recently, we uh, completed a flow test on the 97-year-old original cement line cast iron pipe, and that C-factor is steady at 140, evidence that uh, C-factors for cement lined iron pipe remain constant down through the decades. In addition to that, we manufacture spiral welded steel pipe to 12-foot diameter, We have plants in production now in South Carolina and in Michigan, and we are building a third spiral well plant right now in Paris, Texas, to serve the very thirsty appetite of the Southwest for their water needs. We're very excited about that. Yeah, that is exciting news. Uh, Anxious to hear more about that. So uh, tell us about some other things that you're up to at American. Well, we've got a very strong technical conference this summer. The audiences, in fact, with these virtual environments may turn out to be larger than the online audiences. I was in a video meeting recently, and we had twice the usual number of participants as compared to when the committee meets in person. But at the end of the day, I miss the conferences. I miss seeing people in person and hope that we can get back to regular events pretty soon. Yeah, I'm actually surprised to see you in the office. Normally, you're at all these conferences delivering these papers and speaking. So what's up next? Well, I've got two papers and presentations at the American Society of Civil Engineers Pipelines Conference this summer in August. I've watched this conference grow and participated in it since it had only a couple hundred attendees to more than a thousand regular participants now. Some of the nation's most influential designers and water uh, system operators are uh, regular attendees each summer and would not miss it. So two papers and presentations. Tell us about one. Well, sure. Thank you. Uh, One's a paper and presentation titled, What is Pipeline Resilience? We hear so much about resilience. I thought I might define it with respect to pipelines. And so I interviewed a number of industry subject matter experts to get their opinion and definition of pipeline resilience. And what did they say? Well, four categories of pipeline resilience actually were a matter of obvious consensus from all their responses. Hmm. So what are they? Well, first of all, combined categories of material strength, toughness, and fatigue. Secondly, joint performance is essential. And as noted in the second presentation, joint performance is very critical. And thirdly, sustained performance, a long and robust service life. And finally, life cycle considerations. What is the lifelong cost, not just the initial purchase price? Hmm, Interesting. And how did all that stack up? Well, it is quite interesting, and it stacked up very well. Thank you. I compared ductile iron and steel to PVC and to pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipe. Ductile iron and steel behave similarly, so that was an easy comparison and contrast. They have similarities in every category. Contrast, what was the most striking one? Well, the most interesting comparison between all of these materials was the concept of fatigue. Fatigue is a result of constant and frequent surge and pressure variations. It's an experience for a pipeline as sure as the blood pressure in our arteries and veins is for us. It's the same as bending a paperclip back and forth until it breaks. PVC is very susceptible to fatigue because its yield strength is so low. 
DVC's yield strength is 6,500 PSI. That's only 15% of the 42,000 PSI yield strength of ductile iron and steel, less than one-seventh the strength of iron and steel. And as John Platzmeier, a well-known pipe expert, said in our interview, cyclic loading is as certain for a water or wastewater system as the heartbeat is for a cardiovascular system. Materials with lower yield strengths are more susceptible to fatigue. In all reality, ductile iron and welded steel pipe will not fail due to fatigue. That cannot be said of other materials, so cyclic loading due to starting and stopping of pumps external traffic loads, and other transient events needs to be considered. Todd, that is an impactful statement, and every designer and water system owner needs to take that into careful consideration. Yeah, I'll say that's impactful. Wow. Who else is speaking about this? Well, that's a great question. A number of thoughtful people are. Dr. David McPherson is one. He's a well-known pipe expert. He's published in Journal AWWA and elsewhere studies that caution about fatigue analysis and the importance of getting it right. Fatigue is complicated, but ductile iron and steel provide margins against fatigue that can make it much easier and more comfortable for owners and engineers to properly understand and design. Hmm. So what else is in the resilience paper? Well, we discussed joint performance, including ductile irons and steels, endwise thrust capacity, deflection capacity, and our innovative seismic adaptability. We've got some relatively new seismic joints that are, frankly, phenomenal designs of resilience. We also discuss sustained performance, such as topics from an Everglades study, which I'm presenting at the NACE conference, and life cycle considerations, which I presented at an AWWA conference last October in St. Louis. And life cycle considerations are a topic worth an entire interview, Todd. So put me on your schedule for that. All right. We'll do. Uh, we're always welcome to have you back. It's quite an impressive summer you're having there, delivering all these papers and speaking on all that. I look forward to seeing all of them in print and the opportunity to see them presented virtually. And I do appreciate, we continue to appreciate your leadership in this industry, Maury. How can others have access to all this? Well, that's a good question, Todd. With the advent of these online presentations, I've presented these topics to several groups, and I'm happy to do so for any consulting engineering firm, any water or wastewater utility, or any other group, such as an ASCE chapter. These are eligible for continuing education credits, and I can easily document that for you. They'd be great topics for both young design engineers just beginning their career, and also seasoned veterans looking to see some new information and new product development such as this. So call me up and let's get going with those. I'm at mgaston at american-usa.com. My telephone is 205-325-7803. Our website has an inquiry portal, american-usa.com. And you can also use a special meeting request address called request a meeting at american-usa.com. I'm also on LinkedIn, and I welcome any connections there. Maury Gaston, the Manager of Marketing Services for American Ductile Iron Pipe and American Spiral Weld Pipe. Maury, my friend, as you always, great to have you. Thanks for carving out some time to join us. Thanks, Todd. War Eagle and go Knowles. <laughs> there you go. All right. On behalf of all of us at Water Online, thanks for tuning in to Water Talk. You can learn more about us at wateronline.com. We'll look forward to seeing you again very soon on Water Talk. We'll see you then.